Electric bikes and scooters are an increasingly popular way to get around, especially in the city. Advocates say they're better for the environment than cars, and for delivery workers, bikes are the key to their livelihood. But those batteries that power them can also be a dangerous fire hazard. Just last week, a fire caused by e-bike batteries critically injured a woman in Bushwick. The FDNY found 50 lithium-ion batteries in just one apartment and believes someone was operating a battery repair business inside. And fires from lithium-ion batteries are becoming more and more common, according to the FDNY. The batteries caused 220 fires and six deaths in 2022 alone. The Bushwick fire was the 24th battery fire just this year. So how can these batteries be used safely? And should you be concerned if there are electric bikes and scooters in your building? Joining us this morning is Brian O'Connor, a technical services engineer from the National Fire Prevention Association. Brian, thanks for taking a couple of minutes with us. Thanks for having me. Happy right. to be here. Let's start with the basics. Why are these lithium ion batteries so flammable in the first place? So the thing that kind of makes them dangerous is the same thing that makes them useful. The fact that they can store a lot of energy in a small location. Uh, when they fail, and they can fail a number of ways, either being damaged, you know, through extreme temperatures, physical damage, charging them incorrectly. There's a couple things that can happen there, but when that happens, they generate a lot of heat that creates the generation of this toxic and flammable gas, and that creates a rapidly developing fire, which is hard to escape and, and can produce a, a, a lot quicker than normal fires. So, I mean, take me through this. I mean, <laughs> so is the downside more than the upside on this? I mean, I know it's, it's great for e-bikes and it packs a lot of power, but you can't fly with them. Obviously, the airlines have already caught on to this. And with what's happening uh, in the city alone where there's a high concentration, it seems like the danger factor is a lot higher than the convenience factor. So there's always a balance of trying to figure out where an acceptable risk is for these things. But ultimately, there's a very low failure rate of batteries. I mean, every, I have six batteries within arm's length of me now between my watch, my phone, my laptop, and they're all being treated correctly. They're all following the manufacturer's recommendations. I'm using the correct chargers. And these are some small steps we can take to make sure that they aren't going to go into thermal runaway and, and cause a fire. So let's talk about the best practices for storage of these batteries. What would you recommend? So storage, first and foremost, follow the manufacturer's instructions. They know what's, what's best, but some commonalities that you'll see across all manufacturers are store them in the correct temperature range. Don't put them in the freezer. Don't let them get you know over 100 degrees. Uh, put them in a place that they're not going to get physically damaged, that you know, maybe not high up on a shelf. Don't store them at the top of a staircase where they can fall down. Uh, something else is don't store them in your, your path of emergency escape. That's something that's really dangerous because ultimately when you're bringing your e-bike into your apartment, you're probably going to want to store it close to the entrance if, if you are storing it inside because you, know, you don't want to get your apartment dirty. So these are some small steps that you can take to make sure that you know, we avoid damaging those batteries. All right, so we talk about storage there. What about charging these batteries? Safe practices there. So similarly, follow those manufacturer's instructions, but also use chargers that are going to be provided with your equipment. You know, what happens when most of us lose our chargers for our phone? We probably go to the dollar store or Amazon and might get a cheaper one. Uh, I'd say that's not the best option for these lithium ion batteries, especially these bigger batteries, because that can lead to incorrect charging, heat generation, and ultimately a fire. Now, as we said, these fires are becoming more and more common. Now, the New York City Council considering a bill that would ban the sale of refurbished batteries. Do you think that's enough? And I guess my sidebar question to this is, is do, are these fires caused from people trying to either modify or the, using the incorrect chargers, or are they at fault as well? Is it not just the batteries? Yeah, so it's absolutely human interaction with these batteries that can increase the likelihood of failure, uh, whether that's tinkering with them or anything like that. I don't know if I can speak specifically to that exact proposal just because uh, I'm not too familiar with the statistics around whether a refurbished battery is going to be much more likely to fail than a normal new battery. Uh, but definitely these small steps people can take to try to reduce it and make their environments a lot safer for their family and their neighbors are things that we should be absolutely taking and educating the public about. Yeah, I guess that we can probably make the assumption that a brand new battery is probably better than a refurbished battery when we're talking about something that's such a, a powerful little kind of power plant um, that it's probably better to go brand new than to try to refurbish these things. Yeah, that's probably right. Again, I, I'm not sure about any statistics behind that. Um, but ultimately, if there's you know more time out in the environment, there's more likelihood of damage. Got it. Okay, Brian O'Connor from the National Fire Prevention Association. Brian, thanks for taking a couple of minutes. We appreciate it.
Yep, thanks for having me. And we'll have the organization's full guide to e-bike and scooter safety on our website at cbsnewyork.com.